just the fabulous set of readings that the church gives us today. And they don't really need much of a much of a homily. There are people who are proud and there are people who are humble. And it's the humble that will be holy. So let's make sure we understand what the scriptures are not saying. Just a couple simple points here this morning. It has nothing to do with where you sit in church. You can sit in the front, you can sit in the back. Some people sit in the back because they just don't like crowds, whatever. It has nothing to do with where you sit. It has to do with where you stand. Where you stand with God. The distance between you and God. It has nothing to do with the pew you sit in. Nothing. Okay? Notice it said, two men went up to the temple to pray. The proud man did not go up to pray. He couldn't pray. Notice it said, he said this prayer to himself. He said this prayer to himself. He couldn't pray. He was so proud. And because he can't pray, he'll never know what his sinfulness is. And because he doesn't know what his sinfulness is, he'll never be able to repent and get closer to God. That's pride is the father of all other sins. The humble person, the guy sitting in the back of the church, he is able to pray with sincerity of heart. And he knows what his sin is. And he will be able to change. Pride kills the spiritual life. Humility is the mother of grace. Pride is the father of sins. And when there's no room for God, because you're so filled with yourself, there will soon be no need for God. When there's no room for him, there'll be no need for him. And the ultimate insult in the story is that the good things that the guy had done, fasting, giving money to the church, oh, that's a wonderful thing to do, joke, joke, laugh, laugh. <laughs> Those things are, are forgotten. The sinful guy, because he's humble, acknowledges his sin, his sins are forgiven. See the difference? That's why humility versus pride is so important. The, the whisper of a humble person, his prayer in whisper is heard. The shout of a proud person, God forgets. It's gone. He couldn't care less. But what's the underlying point of the story on a deeper level? That's why you come to church. You can read that story at home by yourself. It's the distance between the two men, not just their distance from God. It's almost like they're in two different churches. We're going to have a second collection today. Unannounced, though you might have seen it on Facebook. You should check the Facebook page every day because Gerard's putting stuff on all the time. For the victims of the fire. Now, learn a lesson from that. They raised $27,000 in 24 hours. That's half the bishop's appeal. When we work together as a family that comes together and prays, amazing things can happen. When it's just me in my little pew, then you don't have a lot of power. But when we're a church, a community, and Scranton isn't filled with rich people. This North Scranton certainly is not filled with rich people. But when we come together and pray and worship together, together we can do remarkable things. These two guys may well have been on different planets. That's the ultimate crime that pride does. I'm up here, I don't need you. I don't need God and I don't need you. What a loser. But that's what pride does. That's what pride does. You know, Muhammad Ali, most of us in the building right now remember Muhammad Ali. You know, and his great line was, I am the greatest. And he was a very good boxer. They say he was on a plane one day, and his stewardess came down saying, seatbelts on, seatbelts on. He said, man, Superman doesn't need a seatbelt. She said, no, but Superman doesn't need a plane either, so put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Let us be humble, not proud. Let us stand, my friends, for a profession.